The important thing with level one dots is to allow a child to identify them naturally on their own. We want to have the iconic presentation matched by the symbolic writing of the number. And to notice that within every presentation, the dot before is there. So inside of the three, there's two. See the two? And inside of the four, there's three. See the three? And inside of the five, there's four, so on and so forth. So we need to learn this pattern with site identification passively and then to be able to execute it actively every time as the default position. So let's say we do the dot pattern and I'm checking them in class. I'll point to this one. I'll say, what number is this? And they may say eight. They may need to count it through. Do not force them to memorize if uh, they have not made the discovery for themselves yet that that pattern, when they see it, is always eight. They need to build their foundation on their own without having it you know, given to them. So allow them to count it through until one day they just say, oh, that's eight. I know that one. I don't have to count it. Now, I can point to this one and they might say, oh, that's a six. I know six. But something really interesting happens. When I ask them to make six, okay, show me a six. See, we're using that dot pattern presentation as a noun rather than an adjective. So that, that presentation is six. And it's very important that we show it that way. So a child will sometimes do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll say, oh no, where does the six always go? And then they have to move it here. And this is very, very important because in the negative space, under each dot, we can see what is called the complement of 10. Here's the six, how many more do I need to make 10? We live in a base 10 system, so understanding where our 10 is is fundamental to doing any kind of arithmetic. So we know, just from the presentation itself, we can see in the space that we need 4. So we have a 6 and a 4. This comes in level 2. How many more do I need to make 10? Oh yeah! And they have to write them in and figure out how many they have in that presentation. Then beyond that, we want to talk about splitting numbers. So inside of a five, what do I have? How can I split this? I could split it as a one and a four, or I could split it as a two and a three, or I could split it as a three and a two, different ways, and one and a four. Those are just the ways we can split the five, but that's really the only ways we can split that one. Each pattern has its own way of splitting, so six is also made up of a two and a four, or six is a tough one for the splitting, but for the three and the three, you can have a three and a three. You can have a five and a one, which is very clearly split this way in the pattern. Understanding how to split these is going to be very important later on for the arithmetic. We handle the splitting of, of the dots symbolically in level five, where we ask a child to do as follows. Something like this. Well, so we have a, some kind of a little circle and we say we have five all together if we split one off of our five how many do we still have left and they should come up with four and if they can't come up with it in the symbol they can do it in the dots until it transfers into their symbolic knowledge but we make a, a clear differentiation between when we're using with the dots to introduce the concept of splitting the number and when we transfer into the symbolic and so this is a big step to be able to handle this symbolically the next thing we do then is to use the dots in, in respect to addition. So if we take a number, okay, such a six, and we want to add another number to it, such as an eight. So let's find an eight. Okay, so here's my blue eight that's coming up. And I'm doing six plus eight. Now, symbolically, I would represent this as six plus eight. We teach the children always to start with a bigger number, no matter where it is in position in the problem, because the bigger number wants to be a 10. He wants to be a 10. So, you know, depending on the age of the child, they'll use different language, and a younger child will say, oh, Mr. Eight wants to be a 10. How is he going to be a 10? How many more does he need? And the child will usually very quickly and clearly tell me, oh yeah, he needs two, Miss Lori Beth. And I said, where's he going to get the two from? And they'll say, oh, from the six. And you want the child to take the two properly, preserving the pattern. You don't want them to take 
randomly from the middle because some children do have a conservation of number problem, which will not necessarily allow them to put these things together. So let's keep that pattern together. Let's do, oh, I need a two. We could take this two and make our 10 part. Okay, I need two to make 10. And I have four singles. If I have one set of 10 and four singles, what is that number? And the child will say 14. Because earlier on, we will highlight, in level two, we highlight the idea that this is one set of 10 all together. When we see a full pattern, that is one set of 10. And this is four singles. You know, it's sort of an accident of English that um, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14 developed as they did because in other languages and other cultures, hearing the 10 parts very clear, it's to represent 11, you say 10, 1. And I think that would solve a lot of problems in English if we could just represent our numbers as 10, 1, 10, 2, so on and so forth, 10, 7. But we don't say that, we say 17. Well, what happens linguistically is that the child then pastes a label over the concept of 17 ones in a straight up count. And so then they count their way up to the problem. All right, let's, let's see. So, gosh, I have an eight, and let's try a four. Okay, eight plus four. You'll see a lot of pause and hesitation with children when they haven't figured this out. Eight plus four, I need two to make 10. Oh, two left over, one set of 10 and two singles. What do we call that? 12. It's very clear.